Hey everyone, Rick here, and folks, this is it. Did I save the best for last? Because this is almost my 40th video that I recorded. I did this all in one evening. What time is it? It's almost 11 p.m. here in uh, Nebraska. When, when did I start recording this? Maybe, I don't even know. I've probably been recording videos for five or six hours. This is like my 38th or 36th video or something like that. Oh, I thought I was going to do this over a period of several days, but I did it all in one day. Probably going to have a lot of uploads coming up. <laughs> Maybe do one a day or a couple a day or something on the Battlefields of Mana YouTube channel. So anyway, this is the last video. This is the last unit. We've talked about all the Regal Guard, all the Lunar Knights, all the infantry, all the range, all the cavalry, all the heroes, all the marauders, and now... Finishing off all the mercenaries. So to recap, what is a mercenary? Well, unlike Lunar Knights or Regal Guard, when you're building those armies, you can have up to four of each different unit type. You can have four units of archers, four units of light cav. Mercenaries, you get a little more bang for your buck. You're only actually allowed one unit in your army of each different mercenary type. And because of that, they are a little more bang for your buck. So, also... You, you can have multiple different mercenary types, like you can have a unit of these sh serpent sharpshooters and also a unit of greatswords. So you can have multiple different mercenaries, but only one of each different uh, mercenary type. And of course, I do have enough for if both players ended up wanting to use the same mercenary unit they could in a single battle. The other big thing about mercenary units is you have to earn the right to even field them. So what does that mean? Well, mercenaries you know, in this case, are a little skeptical about who hires them. They don't just take coin from anybody, contrary to popular belief. So you have to beat them in battle first. The way that works is, you know, as a player, you say, okay, well, in the future, you know, I'd like to field serpent sharpshooters. Well, what happens is you find an opponent, they're going to build an army of marauders. They are then going to include the mercenary unit that you want to field in the future. So it might look something like this with a generic Marauder standard bearer in the unit. So you'll play that game. You'll create your army of Lunar Knights or Regal Guard or whatever. Play that game out. If you win, you then, for the rest of time, have the option of including that mercenary unit in your army going forward. So it might look something like this. If you're a Regal Guard fan, stick a generic Regal Guard banner bear in the unit, and now you get to field them in your own army. I love these Serpent Sharpshooters. There's so many different poses. I think there's three poses in this unit. There may even be more poses. You know, I have uh, enough for two full units of these guys. Um, so Serpent Sharpshooters, why may you want to include them in your army? Well, let's run down these stats and see if they are worth saving for last. First of all, one attack die apiece. That may not sound like a lot, especially in close combat. That means they're only going to be rolling up to three dice. Combat strength, there is none. Armor, two, which means in order to hit them, attackers will need to roll threes or better. Now, no defensive special abilities. The Serpent Sharpshooters are just going to be rolling their typical defense dice. Uh, range, however, is 12. They are going to be shooting a 12-inch range. Movement is five. They're moving five inches and if they forego combat that turn, they can move twice, move up to 10 inches, but actually even more than that. We'll talk about that in a second. But typically, that's what it would mean. Initiative is plus four. That is the highest non-hero initiative bonus in the game, tied with light cavalry, who are also plus four. So initiative bonus means when you are in close combat, and you are rolling off to see who goes first, initiative bonus is added to the roll of a d6. So Serpent Sharpshooters are going to be adding four to their die. Not that you really ever want to get them into close combat, but maybe with such a high initiative. Health is a two, so every figure in the unit has two HP, which means every two wounds the unit takes, you will remove a figure as a casualty. 
And then look at all these abilities. This is what makes the serpent sharp shooters as deadly as they are. And number one is nimble. So kind of negate everything I just said about the moving and shooting that we just talked about. Nimble means they get an extra free movement action. So what that means is they can move twice and still take a combat action or move three times. With a movement of five, that means this unit is can move five inches, 10 inches, or 15 inches in a single turn. Don't forget, Battlefield's a man typically played on a two foot by two foot playing surface. They can move 15 inches in a single move turn. Or with that 12 inch range, they can move twice, five, five more, that's 10 inches, and then still shoot 12 inches. That's a total of 22 inches. Essentially, that's anywhere on the board, turn one, they will be able to shoot. Now, of course, in range combat, you get supporting attacks. So when they are shooting, assuming they've taken no casualties, they'll be rolling six dice. Six dice with a 22-inch range, and that is not where it stops. Poison. So that means if they do hit even a single wound on an opponent, that unit or single figure or whatever is now poisoned. We'll put a poison token on them. At the end of every turn, your turn and my turn, units with poison roll a d6. On a 1, it takes 2 wounds, unblockable. On a 2 or a 3, 1 wound, unblockable. 4 or 5, nothing. And a 6 cures them of poison. So you can just imagine these serpent sharpshooters running all across, up and down the board, firing their shots, poisoning every unit in the game as they shoot, shoot, shoot. Notice there's no move to fire penalty. So attack dice have no penalty, even if they move the same turn they shoot, and we're still not done. Brutality means every attack die, both close combat or range, that fails to pierce the defender's armor gets to be re-rolled one time. Are you kidding me? So let's recap this. Serpent sharpshooters moving up to 10 inches and still firing 12 inches. So that's essentially 22 inches of range, rolling six attack dice that could poison and any misses get to be re-rolled. I mean, come on, are you kidding me? Cost for all that is five points. Five points for one of the most deadly accurate ranged units in Battlefields of Mana. And that, folks, is where we are ending it. We have now completed reviewing all of the mercenary units. All right. Thank you all so much. If you watch these in order and this was the last one and you've actually watched all 30 to 40 videos, my gosh, I absolutely commend you. Thank you all so much for watching. I do truly appreciate it. And until next time.